Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's bring our minds in. Let's bring our minds in. Hallelujah. Let's bring our minds in. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And come on, come on, come on. Let's give God some glory. Come on, come on, come on. Let's be happy. Hop, come on, come on. How many glad to be in the land of the living? Then show God some glory. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless his name. Let's bless his name. Let's bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we collectively shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, let's give God some glory. Let's give him a hand clap. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. Bless his name. 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 God, we come to worship. We come to give you glory. We come to honor you on this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you to New Life Christian Fellowship. We're located at 1321 Providence Road in Brandon, Florida. And our bishop is Bishop Robert Register, the said man of this house in the name of Jesus. So we welcome those of you who have gathered thus far. We ask travel and mercies for those that are on their way. We welcome you on Instagram and Facebook. Scripture comes, one, one verse of scripture comes from Proverbs 20 and 7. And it reads, the just man walketh in his integrity his children are blessed after him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers. God, oh, anybody that was a role, played a role in your life as a father. Lord God, let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we bless you on this morning because you are the ultimate father. You are our Abba Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord God, and that we shall have salvation. We shall have a way to come and give you glory. Father God, on this day, on this Father's Day, we honor and we give you respect and we give you glory. Father God, we ask that you look on those that are gathered thus far. Lord God, we ask that you look on travel and mercies for those that are on their way. Father God, we ask that you touch each and every heart of those that have assembled on this morning. Lord God, we know that there is a word from the Lord in this place for us on this day. Lord God, we thank you for the sick and the shut, and we send our virtual healing virtual to our elder Barbara right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we know that man treats, but you heal in the name of Jesus. And so we're asking on this morning that you do a complete healing. We know you as Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for our sister Denise being in the midst in the name of Jesus. Our brother Marty, that says that you are a healer and we thank God for you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you look on our bereavement right now. You said, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do in this place on this day in this year in the mighty name of jesus we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise in jesus name amen let's give god some glory. it's mighty quiet in this place it's mighty quiet in this place we got breath in our lungs on this morning some people slip away some people are in the hospital we don't take that for granted Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, we bless you. Oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Oh, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Nobody. Hallelujah. We got to learn to give God glory. We can't take it for granted that we're in the land of the living. There are some that slip away. Woke up yesterday thinking everything was fine. Didn't get up on this morning. There are people got phone calls. Their loved ones are in prison. There are phone calls that we got people are in the hospital. Come on, we owe God some praise. We owe God some glory. He said, not you, not yet. The devil blocked it. What the devil meant for evil, God turned for his good. In the name of Jesus, he held us back from car accidents. 
He held us back from car accidents. He held us back from our houses getting robbed in the mighty name of Jesus. He held back those gunshots. He held back those knives in the name of Jesus. And we bless you and we give you glory into the hands of our minister of music. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the risen Savior. Again, we want to reiterate and make mention of our happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the house this morning. Those of you who are watching via social media, we want to send a happy Father's Day to all of you who are watching via YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is that you're seeing us on this morning. And especially, man, I've got the microphone so I can say this. I'm so happy to see my pops with me this morning. My daddy. Amen. Pastor Leonard Davis, amen. And my, my little brother with him on this morning, Gerard, God bless you. So honored to have y'all in the place of worship. Come on, praise team. We're going to open up with this song. Simple song says this. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. Anybody come to worship him this morning? To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. When I got up this morning, that's what that was my intention to come here to worship Christ our Lord. I'll sing it again. To worship you, I live. Thank you. To
To worship you, I live. Hallelujah. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Glory. Me help her. You got to hear her. Good morning, New Life. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> um, so we know today is Father's Day, celebrating the third Sunday in, in June and every year. And ladies, we have had some great celebrations here in the past few months. We've had Women's History Month. We've had our New Life uh, Annual Women's Day. We've had Mother's Day. We've had a lot of fun. But today is about the time to celebrate our fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, father figures. <laughs> So it's y'all's day today. <laughs> uh, we have some really heartfelt presentations to get into uh, in giving a few individuals the opportunity to show some thanks and gratitude to the fathers in their lives. But I first wanted to very quickly look at just what a father does and why we want to show them gratitude and appreciation out there for all they do. So I'm going to have a few very short scriptures that briefly tell us some of the things that fathers do. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child the way that he should go, um, tells us that fathers are our first teachers. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 2 through 3, tells us fathers are our examples and who we should look to. 1 Timothy 5 and 8 tells us that fathers are providers for us. Proverbs 13 and 24 tells us that fathers discipline their children out of care and love. Psalms 103 and 13, so chapter 103, verse 13, points out that fathers are tender and compassionate with their children. Deuteronomy verse, chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, tells us that fathers are deeply involved with their children, and they share and teach a wholehearted commitment to God. Uh, fathers never give up on their children, as seen in the story of the prodigal That's right. son. That's right. Luke 15, 20 through 24. And finally, 1 Chronicles 29 and 19 shows us that fathers pray for their children and they prepare the way for their children. So fathers do a lot. They play an invaluable roles in the lives of each of us. And with that being said, we have some people that would like to give a special message, message a special message of gratitude and thanks to the fathers in their lives for all that they do. So the first people that we're going to have come up is Minister Sherwood's daughter, Destiny. She was singing a little while ago. Y'all didn't see her. She was singing. And she was singing the words. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Destiny Victoria Davis. <laughs> My dad was born in the 70s, and I was born in the 2000s. <laughs> but I still love him. <laughs> Very much. My word, and my word is daddy. D, you give me a drink when I'm dehydrated to help me live. A, a supervisor for my whole life no matter what. D, de never declining my answers or questions. D, defeating who <coughs> whoever tries to harm me. Amen. And why you are always in my life and by my side. I love you, Dad, to earth all the way up to heaven. <coughs> and, Dad, I want you to know how much I love you. You so much. And you are my dad forever. You are so talented. I love you so, so much. Love, Destiny. <laughs> You better give us some sugar. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. You did great. That's wonderful. Thank you, baby. The, the next um, presentation we have is from... Uh, is for Minister Chris' daughter, Tiara. Oh, 
First off, hi, Dad. <laughs> Dear Dad, thank you for always being there for me. You always love me with all your heart. Thank you for all you have done, continue to do every day. I will forever be grateful for you. I'm not sure if I told you that as much as I should. I will always, you will always be my hero. I love you always and forever, your daughter. The next words we have are going to be from Brother Bobo's daughter and granddaughter, Tanisha and Nyla. You didn't know they was out there? Hey, go, you didn't know they was out there? They surprised I saw them. them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say nothing to you. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today, I am, I'm honored to stand before you to celebrate Father's Day and to speak a few words about my dad, who has been an incredible blessing in my life. Dad, your unwavering love and steadfast guidance has shaped me into the person I am today. Your strength has always been a beacon of light in my life, and you have shown me what it means to work hard and to love unconditionally. In times of joy and in moments of challenge, your support has never wavered. Today, I want to express my deepest gratitude for all that you have done and continue to do. Thank you for being my protector and thank you for your love always. Your um, happy Father's Day, Daddy. May God continue to bless you and keep you in his care. Um, before I go, I just wanted to, if it's okay, say a prayer. Absolutely, go ahead. Okay. You're fine. Uh, okay, thank you. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you today with grateful hearts celebrating the gift of fathers. Your word reminds us in Proverbs 27 that the righteous man walks in, in, his, in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. We thank you for the fathers who walk in your ways and live lives of integrity, serving as examples for their families. Lord, we ask that you bless all fathers with the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of David. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's okay. The strength of David and the faith of Abraham. That is, as it is written in Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you for whenever you go, wherever you go. May they find courage in you, knowing that you are with them in every step of their journey. Guide them, Lord, in raising their children according to your word, Ephesians 6, 4. And according to your word, Ephesians 6, 4 reminds fathers not to, provide their not to provoke their children to anger, but to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Grant them the patience and grace to nurture their children in a loving and godly manner. We also lift up those who may be struggling today, those who have lost fathers, those who yearn to be fathers, and those who have difficult relationships with their fathers. May they find comfort in your promise. Thank you, Lord, for the fathers in our lives. Bless them abundantly and keep them in your care. May, may they continue to reflect your love and grace in all they do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Next for the in-person presentations, we have Deacon Rogers, Deacon Rogers' granddaughter and daughter. Oh, are we waiting for someone? No, they're here. Deacon Rogers. We're, no, we're gonna do those. At, we're gonna do those at the end. Now, hold up. We got one. M How many MCs we got here? <laughs> Just one, right? Yes, sir. Let's run it like that. 
uh, Deacon Roger's daughter and granddaughter, Nyla and Nevaeh. Let's oh, give them a hand as they come. We got everybody. Hi, gorgeous. Do you want the mic first? No, you don't want it? You want the mic? What size are the mics? <laughs> Grandpa, you're proof that dads just get better over time. You're so good at keeping, the, making this family feel Papa. loved. It almost seems like you've been doing this for a while. So keep, so keep it up. Come so sit up keep here, the man. good work. Happy Father's Day. Sit right there. Happy Father's Day, Grandpa. Papa. <laughs> There are so many reasons to celebrate and love a grandpa like you. From your hugs to the wisdom you share all uh, your all love, you're all about making peop making hearts happy. I'm gonna try not to cry. I've seen you cry before. <laughs> you are my first true best friend ever in life. You have always had make my me back. cry. You have always had my back. You show up whenever I need you. <laughs> Even when I know that just, I can't feel anything wrong. You come and check on me because you feel it. Because we lucky. I love you for showing me what a true man is supposed to be. If a man couldn't treat me how you treat me, I couldn't, he can't stay in my life. You was always there, our best friend. Wherever we went, you went. Now my children have the privilege to be here with you, sharing times with you, for you to show them what a true man is. You have always taken care of all of us. They ain't all of them either. And it's not. It's a lot of us. <laughs> and we're grateful. I thank God for you every day. I love you, baby. Come on, clap for him. Okay. Say hey, Popo. So I am, this is my Uncle David. I'm not his daughter, but I am his daughter. I always tell people I have three fathers. My Uncle David, my actual dad, and my heavenly father. I always say I feel like God gave us our earthly fathers so we can learn how to honor, respect, and love him. So with my Uncle David, like she said, he's always been there. He takes care of everybody. It's a lot. And he has never complained. Good man. He is a, oh, yeah, that's a good man, Savannah. So, well, my Uncle David, he has always been there, especially for me. I've had some times where I feel really lonely and like I didn't have a father, but Uncle David was always there. And he loves my kids like they're his. They call him Papa David, Uncle Papa. They, they do it, they call him all types of things. But the love he has given us has made us see that we have a place to go after here. And he shows us that. So, Thank you, Uncle David. Say thank you, Papa. Amen. Come on and clap them hands. When it was Mother's Day, y'all acted different. I said when it was Mother's Day, y'all acted different. I'm not telling you to give honor to whom honor's not due. They said honor is due to him. Come on and put those hands together. Don't y'all get me hot up in here. Next, we have Brother Ryan's daughter, Nevaeh. Aww. Aww. And son. Don't look sideways, Ryan. Come on now. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Aww, this is for my thank dad. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby.
We love our father. He's so sweet that we love him so much. So much. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Better put those hands together. That's our Wednesday night drummer. Right, Ryan? He be playing. Yeah. It's precious. Y'all should see him on Wednesday night. He be hitting them drums. He looking for his check. Don't see Ryan. <laughs> so we understand, unfortunately, not everyone's loved one could be, could be here with us in person today, but many still wanted to share a heartfelt message, so we actually have a few video messages for you guys as well. Really? Really. All right, Marty, claim him, Marty. Shout out, Marty. <laughs> you better shout out out there. here to give a shout out and wish you a happy happy Father's Day. One of the things that I want to say to you is that it's not every day that a kid gets to grow up 
and knowing that his father has molded him in the way that he needs to be. Mm. Um, most people used to ask me what it is that I wanted to be when I grow up, and most of the time I answered always um, that I want to be like you. Jesus. And I want to thank you Jesus. for always being there. You know, a lot of times fathers think they need to, to show up and show out, but no, the real thing is just being there. Being there. And I thank you for that. And for your training and for your upbringing to me, it's made the man, made me the man that I am today. And I am happy to know, show that I have been able to give my kids the same love and affection and the guidance that I got as a kid. So on this day, that's made especially for you, I want to make sure that you enjoy it to the fullest, know that you are loved, and thank you for being my dad. All right. Happy Father's Day. All right. That's Brother Arthur's son. I hope I'll be able to preach. Hey, I hope I can preach after this. Amen. Very nice of you. Thank you for taking us in when we need a place to stay. I want to thank you for Come on, man. Give it up. For giving this to us. I was going to thank you for all of that. I was going to say happy Father's Day. I want to let you know that we love you. That's special. God bless you, girl. God bless you. That's beautiful, Deborah. Good job. Great job. Dress good. I want to say thank you. God bless you. And happy Father's Day. Wow. Wow. Good morning. Happy Father's Day, Deacon. Thank you for being a good Godfather. Thank you for supporting me through all of my little trials and tribulations that I've been going through um, through life. I thank you for, for taking on um, the role as being our father with my siblings and and their children and their children's children. We love you, and I hope that you have a great Father Day and have many, many more. And I love you, and we all love you. Happy Father's Day. That you didn't expect this all around you. I thought of eloquent things to say. I thought of scriptures to recite. And then I thought about our conversation the other day about words. What is understood never needs to be explained. You know what that means. Happy Father's Day. Love you. Happy Father's Day, Deacon and Daddy. As you can see, my family is extremely grateful for you, for all that you were in my mom's life, as well as what you've been to us um, since my mom has passed. Um, we're definitely thankful for you that God has given us another father and so we hope that you have a wonderful father's day we love you 
And again, happy Father's Day. two more in-person presentations. So we're gonna have little Chris come and speak about his father. He wanted to share the spotlight. He's got some words to say about his father too. Making sure that you're watching. <laughs> I'll never be too old to need you, Dad. You've always been there with good advice, <coughs> words that come from the heart, and the kind of loving support I will never outgrow. I hope you know how much I love, need, and appreciate you. Happy Father's Day. And certainly not least of all, we are going to have Mark come up to talk about his love for his father, Bishop. Throughout the years that I've known you, I need you to stand up, bro. In fact, stand next to my mom. No ought to be around too much now. All the years that I grew up without a dad, my dad, my biological dad died when I was a kid. Talk to us, son. This man came in my life when I was 16. We had our issues. We fought, talked about each other, kept on and on and on and on until my mom told me, give him a chance. He wants to be in your life. He loves you. He cares for you. He done things for you. No man that I ever been with will ever do this to you. You were hard-headed. You were stubborn. You didn't know nobody. The only person you had was your grandma and your grandpa. I know you didn't have a father. I know your father was, you know, whatever, whatever. But I give it to this man because if it wasn't for this man, my life would have been ruined. I would have lived out in the streets, kept living out there, living out there. I was scared to come home. I didn't want to face my mom. I didn't want to face him. I didn't want to tell him that, oh, I, I picked the streets, knowing that I had a house to go to. I had a roof over my head. Mm. But if it wasn't for him being there, I would have just done something stupid. Dad, I wish you the best Father's Day of all. You had gave me tough love. You showed me the tough love. You showed me how to treat people, how to talk to people, how to understand people, how to respect people, how loyalty and everything else. And now you're in church. Now, now I'm in church. I dedicated my life to God. I came, when I came to Florida, 
When I first came to Florida, and I dedicated my life to church the first time. It was on Florida Avenue over there by the Hillsborough River Bridge. It was in a small little rink-dink building. I had bad spirit on me. I started talking. I don't, I never, the spirit that I had on me was talking some bad tongues, and then I didn't meant to take it out on my dad and my mom, but I had to leave the church. And when I left the church, and then eventually when we went to Columbus in Florida, I started doing things for the church, helping people park their cars and this and that. And now that I'm an usher here and everything else, it's the same thing. But I, never, I will never turn my back on my dad, no matter what. My dad gave me everything. My mom gave me everything. You know, I'm sorry that I didn't went to Yas's wedding, but I was messed up throughout the years. You know the years that I was messed up. You guys came to visit me at my grandmother's house while I was standing across the street getting high. I didn't want to face you because I didn't know you. I didn't want to face my mother because I didn't want to disrespect my mom. That's the reason why I love you. And I will never stop loving you as long as you're married to my mom. <laughs> well, at least he let me know. But to all the fathers here, I wish y'all the merriest, best blessings. And happy Father's Day to all of y'all. Thank you for allowing me to be here. If it wasn't for you guys, like I say, it wasn't for none of you praying for me every day, every day while I was in the streets, I wouldn't have never dedicated my life back to God again. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I thought I had to pull my belt out. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, son. Praise God. What an amazing testimony. That. <laughs> that, that wasn't all I do. <laughs> what an embodiment of all of the scriptures that we said father should be. Um, that's a, that is a living testimony to all of that a father should be. So praise God for that. Amen. Thank you guys for staying with us for the videos, for um, everybody getting a chance to come and show their thanks and gratitude. We, of course, no, we, we fortunately couldn't get everyone, but we are definitely wishing a happy Father's Day. We want to show appreciation and love to all of the men that are fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, father figures. Y'all play such an invaluable role, and we cannot let society or anyone else try to dampen that or downplay it. We need our fathers. That's so right. God bless y'all. And a quick shout out to my father who couldn't be here, but he's watching on Facebook. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. <laughs> Come on, let's give a round of applause for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. As we honor our fathers on today. Come on, Amen. no patty cake. Put those That's hands right. together. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, we're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, praise and worship. Uh, let me just quickly, since we're in this mode, and I know that time has far been spent, but my dad is in the house, and I must give kudos to a wonderful father that I've got. Amen. God has blessed my brother and I, my brothers and I, amen, of, of these 40-something odd years. Uh, uh, my dad has, we've had some ups and downs, but listen, I could not ask for a better father than I have right here. Amen. And, and, and I got to say that the, the reality is this. Listen, we, we all have our, our ups and downs, and uh, uh, ultimately what I can say about this man who Everyone thinks that well, we're brothers because every time we're together, people are always saying, oh, is that your brother? And it just makes him just feel so, so yeah, good. Yeah, he, he like that. <laughs> he loves He's that. smiling now, Sherwood. <laughs> Amen. He's smiling now. And, and, and Bishop, I, I must say this. Listen, I, I do not know where would we be without Leonard Davis. He's been there for my mom uh, through the thick and the thin and uh, been there for us. Amen. Like I said, there's, there's no, no hiding it. We've had some ups and downs. There's been some tough times. But through it all, where would we have been, my brother and I contest, 
where would we have been without this guy? He has been truly a father to us, and I'm so grateful to have you in our life. Amen. God bless you. All right, Pastor, we're going to go ahead and, and get started with our praise and worship. We won't be before you long. Come on, praise team. Let's give it up for our, for our spiritual father, Bishop Robert Register in the house. Hallelujah. Bless you, Mama.
today you just got to believe it and receive it that God will perform it I'm looking today
for the church. Come on, two, three, yeah! started uh, that song when I came in here because listen I, I was at a wedding yesterday and um, there was I wanted to just before the wedding started yes, sir. there was about 200 people there and I know I wasn't the only one in that place that wanted to tell God thank you now I know I had a job to do I had a job to do but before I did the job, I wanted to openly declare out of my mouth, thank you. And, and I mentioned it to Mother Bernadine, and she, she, didn't, uh, she didn't warm up to it. And, and it wasn't my place to usurp that wedding. So I said, well, I'll wait until tomorrow when I'm around people who understand what it means to say thank you. What 
what it means to say thank you. That you woke me up this morning. Thank you. That you put breath in my body. Thank you. That you let, let nobody die in my house. Thank you. I got food to eat. Thank you. I've been dealing with, I'm an anemic. I found out I'm anemic about maybe, I don't know how long now. But in 2012, I lost about 30, 40 pounds. And I didn't realize what it was, but anemia, you, you don't have any appetite, even though you're hungry. And I've lost, recently, I think I've lost at least about 25. So I, I'm going through one of those moments where my energy is extremely low. I had to take some pills just to feel up. But I told God I can't take a pill to feel up no more. I'm going to rely on you. So I came here this morning without any pills in me. I didn't take none to sleep last night. I just trusted in the God I serve. I laid in bed until I couldn't lay anymore. But I feel his grace on me now. I said I feel my help. For my help coming from above. Listen. I never went to church unless I wanted to go. I don't go anywhere that I'm not going to get something out of a place. I don't go I don't go just to be with somebody. I go because there's a meaning, there's something in that building that I'm going to get for my life. I don't care where I'm at in life. If I go out to eat with somebody, I'm going there because I'm hungry. I don't go anywhere with anybody because I'm not getting something out of the place. How dare you grace a place and you don't get nothing out of the place but being with the person you're with. The devil is a liar. You come here to experience God like you never have before. Give me some of that. To worship you, I live. Hallelujah. I don't know how disconnected you are from him, but you need to hear this. Come on, to worship. To worship you, I live. Come on, sir. To worship you. I got left on this planet.
what's the Myron Butler song? You know, like, yeah. Make, see, listen, I, was, I didn't become a worship overnight. I was at the James Brown and Papa Feel Good and Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud and all that. You know, I grew up in inner city and it wasn't God first, even though they attempted to show us what God was. They did the best they could. But, but the, the, the reality of life is that you can't keep your children from the world. And no matter how you attempt to safeguard them, you can't protect them always. They'll be exposed to things that you won't be able to save them from. Ain't my hear what I'm saying? So there's another song that I, I, I really value that Sherwood sings. Maybe this will touch you before I preach. But when you come here, you come here for a reason. Somebody say amen. Don't let nobody drag you to church and you sit here and look like a bump, a bump on the log. The devil is a liar. I don't care what you're into.
hands together if you love him. Let's give the grace seat my hand. I won't belabor my time here. If you have a Bible, if you don't have one, it'll be on your screen. But you can't really, you can't really see you don't have a Bible because it's on your smartphone. You can, you could, you could download it real fast. We're going to the book of St. Luke, chapter 15. We're going to look at two verses, verse 11 and 12. And uh, I don't know about you, but as a homo sapien, I've been trying to figure out all my life what being a man and a father is. I dealt with some abandonment issues growing up. Uh, I had no father there. And I had to wonder, was it because he didn't like my mother or did he not love me? I'm thankful that God healed me from those abandonment issues. And I was able to get restoration with a man that was my biological father but was never a dad. There's a difference between being a father and being a dad. A father will show up for graduation but a dad will help you with your homework. So I had issues, and, uh, and when you have issues, you, you really need to work them out. In fact, we live in a society where we think men have no place anymore. You couldn't get here without a man. <laughs> Say that. I know they got a lot of ways of working some things out and IVF and all this stuff, but still it takes a seed from a man. I don't care how you manufacture it, you still need a man. That's right. In fact, the Bible says in Psalms, the 11 verse 3, just look at that for a minute. Pull that up for me. Psalm 11, 3 in the King James Version. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Father's the foundation of the family. If he's not there, according to statistics, you don't stand a chance. Mm. I, I have the, the numbers. You should know them. They said that you're more likely. I'm not going to belabor you with the numbers. You can pull it up later on. They said when there's no male figure in the house, not just a, not just a boyfriend, but a, a father, doesn't necessarily have to be your biological father, but he needs to know the, the role of a parent and be willing to make those sacrifices. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Our, our place can't be substituted mm. by logic or things. I'm afraid as a society, I was talking about statistics, they say that when there's no male representation in the home. And I, listen, I thank God for my mother. I thank God for all of the challenges that single parents, single mothers have, have been able to overcome. My God. But certainly they could have done it better if they had a partner there. The fact that uh, the scriptures say in the book, please ask that two are better than one, is talking about income. The mere fact that you only have one income coming in it goes to the fact that when there's a lack of money, anything is liable to happen. 
They say that abuse can take place. Prison. Teen pregnancy. So many things, so many of the social ills are, are upon us because of the, the breakdown of the, of the fact that the family institution is no longer what it should be. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So I've been, like a lot of men, trying to figure out. In fact, uh, I remember when I was growing up, I had, I had promised. I was hurt so bad by it. I had swore to myself. I didn't swear to God because I, even though my mother took us to church, I didn't have a re real relationship with God. But I swore to myself, which I should have realized that I, I wasn't swearing too much, that I would never have a kid outside of wedlock. I was adamant about that. As a little kid, I was adamant because I didn't want a kid to go through what I had to go through. But when you don't put anything in place to safeguard the consequences of your actions as a sinner, then the very thing that you wish won't happen will happen. And the, and the, the, the irony in it is that I remember looking at my birth certificate one day and I saw, because my mother wasn't married to my father, she was 27 years old when I was born. He was 33. Something told me to look at my birth certificate, or my son's birth certificate. My daughters, I have twins. When I looked at birth certificate, their mother was 27, and I was 33. Ain't no coincidence. There's some things, listen, when, when you're filling out these, these forms that says, do you know your history? You need to know your history. The people that you come from. Because more than likely, their proclivities you're carrying. Their strengths and their weaknesses. And if they don't tell you, you need to know. Somebody say amen. But because Christ wasn't in my life and I had no safeguards up and I was acting just like any other unbeliever, I had sex without thinking about the consequences. Talk to me, somebody. Well, sir. Not, all I was concerned about was the, the immediate results not thinking about that this could cause consequences and how many children have been born like that on a fling I was sharing with a friend the other day that if you can and I know it's not always possible if you can try to stay away from blended families if you can if you can I mean it is what it is I thank God for those who had been stepfathers and stepmothers. But in as much as there have been good stepmothers and good stepfathers, there have been witches and devils. Well, supposed to be a father, but he rapes the daughter. Supposed to be a mother, but she, she frightens the children. I have a word from the Lord and I'm going to be out the way. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 and 12. Here begins the reading of God's word. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall unto me. And he divided unto them his living. So for the scripture, so for a few moments, I want to talk to you on the subject, figuring out fatherhood. Somebody say, figuring it out. Father, let's pray. Father, have your way in this place. Breathe on me. Touch my life and touch the ears of those. Touch the ears and hearts of those that are in this building and those that are watching by one of the social media platforms. Don't let anybody leave this place the way they came. Bring conviction. Bring a consciousness of who they are and where they're at as it relates to you. You do that, I'll be grateful. At the end of this exercise, these your people will be edified and your name glorified. This and all other merits be big in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. Come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. Another scripture I want to show you for a minute. Because even though there's, there's a level of, of evil and um, disorder in the world. 
are men and women alike. It doesn't mean because I'm participating in some activity that's considered evil. It doesn't mean that I don't care for my kids. So that means I can sell drugs and, and still love all my children. The text says, look what the text says in Matthew 7, 9 through 11. So there's no excuse for even folk that are evil not to be present in their children's life. It says, or what man is there of you whom if your son asks for bread, just bread, not Nikes, just some bread, just something to eat, daddy, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. This scripture changed my life. How much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So even if you're bad or you know, because um, fathers, not dads, have a tendency to make a lot of excuses or why they're not around and why they're not doing what they need to do. But the text says even evil men know how to do what they need to do, even when they're evil. So there's no excuse for parenting children and not being a dad. You ought to stay out of that business. Because the consequences can be astronomical. Not just financially, but in your latter years. When you need somebody to give you some water, some soup, and all them kids you never took care of, strong as oxes, ain't got, don't care nothing about you and where you at. I wish I had some help in here. You better watch what you do to people. In the text this morning, really interesting text, it's a, Profound text about the father and these two sons. What I want you to, to realize initially in the text, someone would say, why would this man give his son this inheritance when he knew what he was going to do with it? If you have children and you're a parent, you already know whether your children are responsible or irresponsible. And if they're irresponsible, you're not going to give them something that you have worked hard for. For them only to squander it and waste it in frivolous living. You're not going to do that. Nobody works hard to throw their money away. I ain't getting no help in here. But you got to understand the logic of a dad. Why would a dad give his son something that he knew he couldn't handle? Because he realized that eventually he was going to leave anyway. And those of in here that are parents, you got to understand that you cannot keep your kids in a prison. Eventually they're going to walk out. Whether they walk out on good terms or bad terms, they're going to leave one day. And it's, it's imperative that they leave and you're in good standings with them even if you don't agree with what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, they're still your child. They ain't getting no help in here. And so, so the first thing you have to understand is the man had foresight. Not in, a, not in respect to losing his stuff, but he realized that if he if he did not give his son what he wanted, eventually he was going to leave anyway. And wouldn't it be better that he left with something than leave with nothing? Wouldn't it be better he left, he left in peace than left in bitterness? So many families have broken up. Mothers and fathers are not at odds and bitter with each other because they came to clash heads and bump heads with each other because they did not understand or did not care what the child wanted to do. I remember my son may rest in peace. And for you, those of you that are parents, I pray you don't, you don't experience the loss of a child. I had to look at some urns this morning. Every Father's Day, I would, I would wait 
uh, the, the things that they did this morning years ago would have, would have bothered me because I was immature. I thought everything was about me and my fractured feelings. I celebrate what you did. And, well, and I didn't expect Mark to do anything because, I, as I said, I'm healed already. Whether my kids celebrate me or not, I'm already healed. Can I get an amen in here? I'm not looking for anybody to prop me up or set me up or make me feel good about who I am. But I remember that me and my son, would, we would have our moments because, and, and, and the challenge was that when I got here and I was working, I got in ministry, that my life was sold out and I didn't realize that I should have paid more attention to my children. Not that I wasn't a dad, but they deserved more of my time. And I, I remember, as Mark said, that I, I give tough love, and I gave him all that. And Robert knew that I was not going to let him just sit in my house. He was either going to work or go to school. He going to choose one of the two, but you're not going to just sit there. And so he decided, he knew that he couldn't whoop me. So the best thing he could do was run. I didn't know he was a runner. When he graduated, I got him a limousine, brand new suit, gave him money. And when he went out, you know, like a lot of kids, he, he went out all night. I remember Silla saying, Robert, he ain't come home. I said, oh, you know, he graduated high school, give him a chance. One day go by, and two days go by, and three days go by, and then I get concerned. Some said, go look in his room. I went and looked in his room, and all the clothes that I bought, I said I was a dad. All the clothes that I bought, he had taken every last one of them out of his closet and had left. Then talked to him to six months later. He said, Dad, I'm sorry, but I knew you wasn't going to let me do my own thing. Um, I, I have regrets because I didn't know because he moved back to New York. I didn't know some of the things that he was in. So I didn't, I didn't develop conversations with him about some of the things that he was doing that would have given him some insight and some wisdom. Don't ever let bitterness or hostility get between you and your children. You always, listen, I don't care what they did. You got to be the bigger person. You have to acquiesce even when you don't want to. For the sake of peace and, and for the sake of survival. There are a lot of kids in the grave today because they, they got in an argument with their parent and they never resolved that issue. I don't want you to be like that. Can somebody say amen? amen? So what did he do? He was wise enough to realize that this, this prodigal son was going to leave anyway. And so he, he might as well leave with something. Not just a name, amen. Not just the clothes on his back, but the Bible said that he gave him what we would call his inheritance. And what, what, he, what he really gave him was his life. He gave him his life. And, and that's what parenting is all about, being a father. Being able to give your life for your child. That means those rims you might not be able to buy. That means them tires, them sneakers, or whatever you like, you won't be able to get it. Why? Because you got to make sacrifices for the child. Your kids are not yours, but they belong to the generation that they were born to. So the thing that a father has to learn, he has to learn to be sacrificial and not selfish. Being selfish and being self-centered comes naturally to saints and sinners alike. So nobody has to teach you to be selfish. You're already selfish. Your flesh tells you, uh, you everything is about you. It's, but when you become God conscious, it's no longer about you. And you'd be surprised some of the parents and children, the arguments that they have in their home. Because the, the parents still are not making the sacrifice they need for the child's life. Psalm 
So he had the wisdom to know to let his son go. Here's the second thing. You, you can't protect your kids from everything. I realized that real early in life when we moved to our second location and, and somebody started chasing me home from school. I always had to figure it out. There was no male figure there. I'd, I'd been always trying to figure out how to be a man and how to be a dad. Somebody said figure it out. And, and learning to be a dad means that you have to become sacrificial. Fathers are not sacrificial. They show up when it's convenient. But dads are there. They're there through it all. Through the good, the bad, and the different. They're there whether you get them something on their birthday or not. They're there. And even when they're not celebrated, they're still there. I wish I had an amen in here. Even when, when we, we, we celebrate mothers more than we do dads, they still are there. So what you have to understand is that God is looking for fathers to be sacrificial. And anything you got, even if it's yours, it ain't yours anyway because you can't take it to the grave. Anything that you got, you can't take with you. Do I have a witness in here? No matter what you do for them or the environment you create for them, and regardless of your consistency and dedication, you can't make them dislike what comes natural for their human senses, which is the world. First John chapter 2, verse 15, tell us not to love the world, neither the things of the world. But how are you going to stop your children from loving what comes natural to them? Do I have witness in here? Curfews and punishments won't block or stop the world from tempting them. You can punish, listen, some kids have been punished upside down, and guess what? They still went to jail. Every time they came in, they got whipped, and guess what? They still had babies out of wedlock. You got to reach and reason with these kids. They're the next generation, and if they fail, God forbid. So the first thing he had, he had wisdom. He had wisdom to know that at some point you got to let your kids go. They ain't kids no more. They're adults. They make their own decisions. It's their money. Now, if they stand in your house, that's a whole nother ball game. If they stand in your house, they supposed to contribute. If they stay in your house and they see dishes in the sink, they supposed to go clean them. If they stand in your house and their clothes in the hamper, they supposed to wash them. Nobody should have to tell them to wash them. Nobody should have to tell them to take out the trash. Nobody should have to tell them to do anything. Why? Because you're providing a roof over their head that they're not paying rent for. You're providing lights and water and everything else. You shouldn't have to ask them to do anything in the house that you're providing for them. And if they got to tell them, then there's something wrong with that child. But putting them on curfew and punishing them ain't going to make them come to a place of their senses. And so the father knew that no matter what he did to the son, it wasn't going to change his mind. He was dead set on getting some weed. He was dead set on, on, on doing his thing. And someone said, well, where did he learn it at? Hey, listen, you, you don't know where they learned it at. Once they leave your house, the world is waiting on them. And when they come back and you're too tired to talk, or talk to them, you're too tired to reason with them and find out what they picked up before they came back. And then you start telling them, I don't know what's wrong with her. I don't know what's wrong. You, you, yeah, of course you don't know. You allowed that devil to get on them. Without examining them, without, without talking to them in a loving way where they can at least be honest and transparent with you. I don't care what your disposition is. We have to have some honesty. So, I, so wisdom will teach me. 
that I've, I've got to be wise handling not just my child, but somebody God ordained to be on this planet. So he gave him the money, knowing that the money had the potential, watch this, to be squandered and it could kill him. But he gave it to him anyway. Because, watch this, his trust wasn't in his child. His trust was in the God who gave him the child. Ain't nobody going to help me in here. So many of us have gone astray. But it was the God that our, that our mother and father knew that pulled us back in. There were many things that my mother could not could not keep from me the drugs the overdose but guess what the God that she knew I ain't getting no help in here the God that she knew that when I did overdose at least somebody that was with me that had some sense to call the doctor and get some paramedics there to, to revive me or her son would have been dead somebody say wisdom so you got to warn them the danger of loving the world and the consequences of being worldly and not being godly. The consequences of being, of being separated from God versus being connected to God. I don't know how anybody could live their life disconnected from the source. That's like taking a plant out of the earth and expecting it to grow. But that's the, that's the state of humanity today. We have these superficial relationships with the Lord. We come to church eh, when we feel like it. We read our Bible eh, when we feel like it. We pray when, when adversity hits. We don't pray just to have a communion and relationship with God, which was the indication that we don't have real relationship with him. And the father knew that the son didn't have real relationship with him. And he had the wisdom enough to know if I let him go, then possibly the fact that I know that he's immature, that God would set up things out there for him that would cause him to fall down on his knees and then look up. I ain't getting no help in here. Because there's some things you can't do for your children or do to them. It's only God can bring them out. I wish I had some help in here. So he had wisdom to let him go. What happened to him? There are five things that happened to him. He became destitute. That's what the text says. The text says that he became, somebody say destitute. Uh -huh. Yeah, as soon as he got out there. As soon as he got out there, he spent up all his money. He had a good time. Because, see, when you got money, you got friends. At least you, at least you think they're your friends. Wait till you ain't got no money. Wait till you can't do what you've been doing for the people that you've been with and see how much they will. So the father gave the son the freedom and the position he desired because he was going to leave anyway. He wasted his life in riotous living. How could a child of mine who went to church like I did live a riotous life? Because he went to church, but his heart was far away from God. How many people go to church, but their heart ain't in here? Talk to me, somebody. How many people will call on God and still not be with him in heart and spirit? So he realized that, that he only could do with so much with this boy. And watch this. He had another son in the house that he didn't realize how jacked up he was either. And even though he stayed home, he was jacked up. Now let me tell you something. I don't care how many times you go to church. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care what you speak in tongues. You don't know what your kids are feeding on. You don't, want, you don't know what they really are until you are able to see what's truly in them. Most kids are prodigal. Most of them are troubled until they find God. He wasted his money. He lived immorally. 
And there were five things that took place. He, was, he became destitute. Verse 14 and 16 in chapter 15 says, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. And the reality of it is you can't stop famines. It had everybody. The Bible said it rained on the just and the unjust. A famine hit, watch this, so he became destitute. That means he had no money, no property. And watch this, all the time he had been with his father, he never developed any talents. How is it you're with me and you ain't got, you don't know what you are? You don't know what you should be doing and, and all you do is work dead-end jobs that don't never challenge who you are because you never actually sat down and prayed and said, God, who am I? Everything you've been doing has been all about your feelings and what you want and how you want to look good and all this other stuff. But nothing has been about divine purpose. Y'all stop talking back there. So when we see our kids, you, you'll know that they're not about anything. Just listen to them. Listen to what your children are talking about. We'll give you an indication of where their heart is. The father knew that he didn't have the son's heart. And nowhere in the text do we see his mother. This was between the father and the son. He was destitute. He squandered and wasted all that he had. His talents, his purposes, his opportunities, his mind, his thoughts, his hands, his body. Because when you're separated from God, you become really destitute. Ain't nobody talking back to me. You really find out how poor you are. It ain't just about your money. It's about your influence. When you have no relationship with God, you have no influence with God, and you have no influence with men. He suffered natural disaster, and natural disaster led to enslavement. What happens to our children when they don't listen? Enslavement. Enslavement to drugs. Enslavement to sex, enslavement to credit cards, enslavement to clothes, enslavement to no good Negroes. They come enslaved to the internet, enslaved to pornography, enslaved to everything but God. He became enslaved and watch this. You know what comes after enslavement? Humiliation. He was, had a father and a house, just like my son said. He had a house, but he preferred to stay on the streets. He was now in the streets, humiliated, and he was hungry. And the Bible says that he would have eaten the food that they were feeding the pigs. That's how low he had sunk. And let me tell you something. If your mother and them took you to church when you were little and somehow or another you stopped going to church, you are going to sink. You're going to sink, and if you don't think you're sinking, you are going to sink. You'll find yourself in want, dissatisfied, unfulfilled, unnourished, empty, unsupplied, and displeased with your life. And that's where he was at, prodigal, broke down on the side of the road. And the Bible said it was there that he came to himself. He came to himself there and he said these words, I have sinned. See, he would have never did that if he stayed home. See, you got to get out there and get a taste of paying light bills. You got to get a taste of paying water bills. You got to get a taste of paying mortgage. You got to get a taste of paying rent. You got to get a taste of paying insurance. You got to get a taste of paying car payments. You got to get a taste of buying groceries. You got to get a taste of what has been hurting me. I, I wish I had some help in here. You've been acting like a hobo most of your life, eating here and eating there, but you never stood on your own two feet. But he came to himself. Let me tell you, share with you, there's something about Palestinian customs. In the ancient world, men never ran. It was a sign of, of, humili of humiliation, of disrespect. Men walked. Even if something was going on that demanded their immediate attention, they still walked. 
So the, the fact that this father was running, you know what that means? It means he didn't care what people thought about him. Because what you got to understand is that they were lived in a small community. Everybody knew that they had some tore up sons. Just like everybody know your kids is jacked up. Can't hide that. But the Bible says that when the son turned and came back, the father saw him a far ways off. And he ran towards the son. Here's, here's another piece of information. Never get so bitter that you can't humble yourself and get your relationship stored with your child. Never be so mad at your child because of what took place that somehow or another you can't talk it out. Well, last time you see son, I ain't talked to him. Why? Last time he here, he, he embarrassed me. Yeah, but you gonna let him die? You gonna let her die? Before you get restored? Are you mad? Are you that evil and unforgiving that you would let your child die? Without getting restoration. And we got parents just like that. Mad as hell at their kids because of the lifestyle they're living. Mad as hell at their kids because who they married. And they don't want to have nothing to do with their children because they don't like the decisions they made. It's their life. They don't have to give you an account. They have to give an account to God. Never get so full of yourself, full of pride, that you can't pick up the phone and call somebody that you've been at odds with, especially if that is your child. Fathers will do that, but not dads. He ran to meet his son. And the boy said, Dad, I've sinned against you. But the father knew that the young man had sought restoration. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been coming back home. And so why wouldn't the father be happy? He was happy. He was overjoyed. The Bible said that he took to the meeting a coat, a ring, and shoes. And all those things were symbolic of authority, restoration. He was restored to his position of, as a son. He no longer was a servant or a slave, but he, he now was entitled to all the benefits of sonship, even though he had been sinning for I don't know how many days. I'm so glad that all I got to do is ask God to forgive me. And he'll open up the windows of heaven, especially if I ask him and I'm honest and I'm sincere about it. He won't hold anything back from me. Healing, deliverance, breakthrough, whatever I ask for. That's what, that's what this text teaches. That if you really repent of your wickedness, God will give you everything he's given everybody else. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Let me share this story with you. There's a friend of mine, grandfather, was visiting his daughter, and uh, she had a little girl. A little baby started crying and just crying and crying. So the dad went into the pen and picked her up and started cuddling her and rocking her. And the mother came back, who was his daughter, don't do that. Leave that kid right there. Don't undermine me, Dad. They're in there for a reason. So Dad respected him, but painfully. It hurt him to see the kid crying. It, sir, sure what? It messed him up to be sitting in there with the kid, and he can't help the kid out, knowing that this kid is his grandchild. Chantel, he became bewildered. He began to think, what can I do to stop? What can I do to comfort this child? He said, I, I can't take the kid out of the bin. What can I do? He said, well, she didn't tell me I couldn't get in the pen. I'm so glad. 
I said, I'm so glad that I got a father that every now and then will get in the pen with me. And when I'm crying, he'll get in there with me and hug me. He might not deliver me right away, but sooner or later, between sunrise and sunset, what I've been crying about, he'll comfort me and bring me out. Do I have a witness in here? He may not come when you want to. But he's always on time. Figuring out fatherhood could take a lifetime. But you got God on your side. Don't just be a father. Be a dad. Father, we give you thanks this morning for your word. We thank you that your word has gone forth and it shall not come back void. But it shall accomplish what it has been sent to do. We pray, God, for restoration in this house for those who have been harmed and hurt because of a lack of a father. They're still dealing with issues of abandonment, sexual abuse, because there was no protector in the house. Now they're completely disorientated to where they are, should be in life. But thank God that there's God. You said you'd be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. You said, call on me and you'll answer. And you'll show us great and mighty things. The Bible said he said he had sinned against his father and sinned against God. And because he repented, Restoration came. I pray, God, that you restore relationship between sons and fathers and daughters and mothers. Bring healing where there's hurt. Bring healing where there's been abandonment. Bring healing where there's been sexual trauma and abuse. Bring healing when there's been lack and poverty. Touch us like you've never touched us before. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, come on and clap your hands for the Lord. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. Don't be a father, be a dad. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't be a father, be a dad. Hallelujah. We thank God for that word on this morning. Amen. We thank God for the presentations. Happy Father's Day. We're going to be um, have our ushers come. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Don't be a father, be a dad. Don't be a dad. Don't be a father, be a dad. Don't be a father, be a dad. There is a difference. How many know there is a difference? We thank God for our Father up in heaven. Hallelujah. We thank God for our Abba Father, the one and only who saved us. Hallelujah. If everyone has envelopes, ushers, you may serve the people. We welcome all of our visitors. If we have any first-time visitors, would you mind standing? If you're here for the first time, please stand so we can acknowledge you. First, second, third. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. How'd you hear about us? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Okay. Would you like to say something? Amen. Amen. Minister Sherwood's brother. Amen. Amen. He no protocol. <laughs> Amen. I got my offering inside. I'll bring it to you. Thank God. How many so glad we have a household that we can come to and worship God? Like the bishop said, we worshipers. There's a difference. There's a difference. We praise him for what he does, but we worship him for who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. If everyone would just stretch towards our offering, we're going to bless the offering. Father God, we thank you on this morning. We thank you for all that's been said and done. We thank you for those who had the ability to give, and we thank God for those who 
wanted to do but didn't do it. You said you give us power to get wealth when we established a covenant. Lord God, you said open up the windows of heaven and see if you won't pour us out a blessing that we won't have room to receive. Lord God, everyone who's given and sold, we ask that you give them back a hundredfold. We bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So a couple of quick announcements. We're going to have um, our wow on this coming Friday. It's every first and third Friday at 7 p.m. If you need the book or copies of the book, you can let Mother V or Minister T know. We want you to continue to be safe out there. Make sure that you hydrate and you drink a lot of water because it's very, very hot. And we don't want anybody to get sick or wind up in the hospital or have some asthma attacks or anything to that effect. We thank God for our mother Geraldine being in our midst on today. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for our sister Kay. Thank you, Lord. We just thank God for all of you who have assembled on this day and we say God bless you and come back. Just looked at my phone, got a call coming in from England. One of my spiritual sons is calling in. Wish me happy Father's Day. Let's stand for the benediction. Anybody thankful? Anybody thankful? Anybody really thankful? And even though I, I say this with with all honesty. Even though my father wasn't a dad, I'm glad I knew him. Because some people have fathers and they don't even know him. They had no contact with them at all. So when you think you got it worse, there's somebody always in a... Father, we thank you for what you did in this place today. Thank you for your healing on my life and thank you for healing hearts that have been broken and harmed by men and women who had never should have been parents. But you ordained that that child would be born. So we pray for healing today and restoration. That they might not be disconnected from you, find themselves abandoned, disjointed, and humiliated. Bring restoration to your children today. We give you thanks. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you who your Father is. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. God bless you, like, and share. We hope to see you on Wednesday. Bless you.